I can absolutely guarantee that you've never seen a van tour quite like this one. How's your hemorrhoid, love? It's acting up a little bit. Yeah? It's not too bad. Not though. too bad. How long is it now? Mm, probably about half an inch. About half an inch? Right. Have you got any preparation H? Yeah, there's one in there right now. Oh, that's nice. With the clay pipe situation sorted, we parked up to film the van tour. Right, let's get straight into this van tour. So, strictly speaking, it's not a van, is it? It's a camper on top of a truck. So this is a 2005 Bigfoot camper on top of a one-ton Chevy truck. Now this road noise is brutal, so let's get inside and finish the rest of this tour. You never know what you're gonna find in the camper, especially with Amanda in there. Hi, love. You all cozy? Sure do. Yeah. What are you doing? Have my lollipop. You know that you can take the wrapper off and actually taste it. You know that? Yeah. Right, so this is uh, Hardcastle Hotel. Can you just grab that for me, love? I'm just gonna take me. Bloody it. Right, so. This is the inside of the Bigfoot and the main reason why I wanted to get a camper is because of this. Let me just flip this round. It's basically this whole, um, what they call a dinette area. And as you can see, Cletus is just uh, he's taking care of my customer service email. So I, I apologize if uh, you've emailed me and nobody responded. He's not very professional, to be honest, as a personal assistant. In fact, let's just get you out of the way, Cletus. You just you just have a little little nap over there. So yeah, as you can see, this is basically my workstation. So as a traveling landscape photographer, you know, I needed something that I could use for downloading my stills, downloading my video footage, and an actual workstation to work on footage and maybe do a few edits whilst I'm traveling. And if you compare this dinette space in terms of size and comfort to something like a Mercedes Sprinter, not all of them, but typically, this is a lot bigger, a lot more comfortable, and a lot more usable. So yeah, first and foremost, that's what I needed as a traveling landscape photographer. And then the rest of it, it's all kind of like domestic stuff. It's the day-to-day -day life. So this is the kitchenette area, if you can call it that. So there's the stove, it's a gas stove. I can't lift that up because I've got the camera on there, but it, it works, it does the job. It's not as fast as a jet boil when making coffee in the morning, but it does the job. So that's pretty cool. Over here, we've got the monitor system. So what you do is you just push this down and then it shows you what's going on with your tank. So as you can see, the holding tank, the, the poo tank, it's a bit full. The grey tank, which is basically anything that goes down the sink, is almost full. The fresh water is half empty and my battery power is flaccid, which is a bit of a concern. Here we have the water pump. So you put that on and now we can, anytime you open the faucet or flush the, the crapper, it'll actually bring water. There we have the water heater. So if you want a shower, you just make sure that's switched on for about, what, 15, 20 minutes? Yeah, about that. And then you've got hot water for a shower or a washing your face or stinky feet, whatever. Hood light, brilliant. Hood fan. That comes in handy. The hood fan absolutely has to go on every time we make anything on the stove because otherwise, not only does the, the bedroom area end up stinking, but the smoke alarm goes off. So that is vitally important. Up here, you can see just storage compartments. Super exciting. More storage compartments up here. If you're watching this video because you're into van life, I should explain that this is a landscape photography channel, so prepare yourself. Wouldn't it be epic if there was a massive mountain behind those clouds? Well, there is, and that's why I'm here waiting for these clouds to bugger off so I can get an epic shot of Mount Robson. And through the magic of modern technology, I can be in two places at once. So while you're watching the van tour, I'll also be over here waiting for these clouds to lift so I can get an epic shot of Robson surrounded by beautiful yellow poplars. Oof. Now let's talk money. Not having to spend six grand every time we visit the Rockies just on hotels and car rentals, well, that's freedom. Now, the camper came with a CD player. Um, I don't know what CD stands for. Um, maybe if you, if you know what CD stands for, you can let me know. Anyway, it had a radio on it, we tried it. It came through these speakers. 
they were absolutely atrocious. So we pretty much don't have any music to listen to in here. We need to figure out a mobile uh, audio system. Yeah, it's just clearing Hi. up. Oh, hey. Hang on, if you're here and I'm here, who's doing the van tour? I am. Oh, you're still there? Yeah. What? Which bit are you doing now? I'm just showing the fridge. Oh, the fridge. That's a good bit, that. So this is the fridge freezer. So at the top, we've got a, f a freezer. Freezer. Not much in it. Just your gluten-free bread and some of your energy balls. Yeah. Some uh, chilies. Yeah, chilies. Just got to have them in every meal. And then what's in the fridge? It's slim pickings because it's the end of the trip. Yeah, so we just got back from a camping trip. We pretty much emptied the fridge before the camping trip. But I like this those pollen. Bee pollen, yes. Yeah. Very good. So the fridge will run off either propane gas or shore power, or the mains, as people in the UK call it. So basically you plug into your house, or if you're at a campsite, you plug into there, and you can then switch it off of the propane so you're not wasting propane, and it'll keep the fridge freezer going. But we hardly ever do that. In fact, to be honest, we've never once hooked up to power, have we, at a, at a campsite? Yeah, we tried last night, but we forgot the cord at home. I forgot the cable. <laughs> So, so yeah, basically everything at the moment is running off the two vehicle batteries that are stored inside the camper and propane and the Jackery. So let me show you the Jackery. Right, so this is the Jackery 500. And they sent me one of these for free, but they're not paying me to talk about this. And this thing is an absolute lifesaver. So because we're off grid all of the time and we don't have solar panels, the way that we charge the Jackery is two methods. We can plug it into the cigarette lighter on the truck. And if you go in maybe like, uh, what, five or seven hours, maybe even eight hours, like a long drive, which is typical for what we do, right? Because we, we're driving from landscape photography location to location. That'll get a full charge in a full day. The other way that you can charge it is a solar panel. Uh, we did have that on the last trip, but we didn't bother bringing it on this trip because space is at a premium in here and the panel's quite large. I'll show you a clip of the panel, but that does work quite brilliantly. And the panel takes about, about seven to eight hours of very, very bright sunlight to get 100% charge on this. The only thing that we struggled with, with the solar power, with the panel, is you know I don't really stick in one location for eight hours and we tried it a couple of times where we just left it at a campsite and you know you just leave it out at the campsite but you're kind of a little bit nervous about someone stealing both the jackery and the solar panel because you know it's, it's worth something so well, luckily we still got it nobody pinched it but that did kind of stress me out a little bit and then the other thing as well is you can set it up at a campsite the panel but Obviously the sun is moving around in the sky and you, sometimes when you come back to check on it, it's now in shade. So it's not an ideal solution. We've left that at home on this trip and so we've, we've only charged this purely from the truck and it's, it's worked brilliantly. So it's at 30% now. Now what I use this for, again as a traveling landscape photographer every single day and especially as a vlogger, I have to do a media dump every single day. I have to download my image files and I have to download my video files from an assortment of devices. So I can plug in my laptop to the Jackery, switch on AC and get, I don't know, a few hours of power at full steam. Now, if you're trying to edit 4K video and you're doing really, really processor intensive edits, this is gonna deplete really quick. So in addition to the AC, actually I'll show you what else we use the AC for. The coffee grinder. We used to have, actually, well we've still got, where's that hand grinder? So we saw this YouTube video from someone saying, oh, don't waste your power on, uh, you know, a grinder. Use a hand grinder. So we bought this hand grinder. Oh, that was hard. Ow, are you alright love? Yeah. So we bought this outrageously expensive hand grinder and it's just a pain in the ass. It's, it's hard work. It's bollocks, isn't it? Who wants to do this first thing in the morning? Just rubbish. So we brought this from home. Grind your beans properly and it, it hardly uses oh, any 1%. power. <laughs> <laughs> it went down from 30 to 29. It hardly uses any power. But I mean, we've used this, I don't know, twice every single day and it, you hardly see it deplete. The other way that you can power up the uh, jackery is just to plug it into the mains, just to plug it into power. And then of course it's done real quick. So you've got 
three USB ports. I use those for charging my phone, my Osmo, and my camera batteries as well. And then all you got is just this little display so you can see what the percentage is. You can see how much energy is coming in, how much energy is going out. That is pretty much it. But for a tiny little unit, that's our only source of power other than the vehicle batteries. This has been an absolute lifesaver. How's the van tour going? I'm still waiting for these clouds to lift. Rubbish. Have I shown you the shower and the toilet yet? You're gonna love this. So the feature that I enjoy most about having a, a camper on a truck is the luxury of hiking down off of a mountain, completely sweaty, desperate for a shower, maybe even a number two, and having on board a shitter and a shower. So let's have a look at that. So this is... Uh, you still haven't taken the wrapper off, love. <laughs> Honestly, it's going to taste a lot better if you take that off. You think so? Jesus. Right, so this is the crapper and the shower. She, she's she's obviously sat on the, uh, the crapper there, but basically you've got this shower, which it took me a while to figure it out, but what you do is you sit on this little plinth here where you can see Amanda's foot. You sit there like that, and then you switch on the shower, and you, you just, you just you know, wash your hair and get showered with hot water. There's the crapper. Do you want to just show them the, the gloriousness of it? No, no, is it bad? I'll lift it. There you go. There's no nuggets. That's all right. Yeah. So just pull the flush and show them how the flush works. Oh. So that's how the crapper works. It's kind of like one of those aeroplane crappers. You know, you just you just pull a lever and it, it sucks it down. But I cannot tell you how wonderful this luxury is to just be completely off grid. You come off of a mountain, knackered, desperate for a plop and a shower, put on some hot water and you're clean in 15, 20 minutes. It's the ultimate luxury. And that is one of the main reasons that we wanted a camper like this. Right, still pretty pathetic over here. I, I promise there's an epic mountain behind those clouds. Honestly, it's, it's, it's massive. One of my absolute favorite things to do whenever I've got this type of wispy cloud that just wafts in and out of these mountain peaks, especially when they're steep ridge lines covered in trees and there's side light or backlight, is I love to put on the telephoto. This is the 100 to 400. And all I'm doing is I'm just going into autofocus mode and I'm just picking out these little vignettes way off in the distance as those smoky clouds just kind of drift in and out of the trees. I just love that sort of ethereal, mysterious look to it. And it's a lot easier to get than you would think. You've just got to be ready. You've just got to kind of hunt around with autofocus on, ready to take a shot. And you don't even really need a tripod. I'm just using this because it's heavy and I'm lazy. But yeah, you just handheld, just kind of hunt around until you see just that nice arrangement of trees with the clouds wafting through. Absolutely magic. What I love about this moment in time is that it's an image of two halves. On the right, you have that lovely warm light hitting the treetops and on the left, it's like an entirely different season with those cold, mysterious clouds hiding and revealing those towering fir trees. The fleeting beauty of these forests never fails to captivate my imagination. What goes on there? What stories could they tell? You know, sometimes it, it just works out this way that uh, the shots that you never really planned, the locations that you never really researched or expected to get anything from, can sometimes give you the best results because I've just spent the last two hours taking pictures of mist, just mist blasting through epic fir trees on these cliffs. And these are some of my favorite shots from this trip. They're just bonus shots. And I just absolutely love them. I never expected to get these shots. When I see scenes like these, they make me feel like I'm looking at some lost citadel or some ancient castles that stand forgotten, left to ruination and the ravages of time. 
I don't think I would have captured these images if it hadn't been for the freedom and the flexibility of having the camper and all that it allows me to do. Oh, that reminds me. This is supposed to be a van tour. <laughs> right, right. So finally, we'll show you the bed. Again, this is another luxury. Just being able to get in your own pit in luxury and be comfortable at night. Let's have a look at this. Oh, look at that. Isn't that nice? So basically, it's uh, I think it's a double bed. It's not, not that huge. There you go. And we both fit quite comfortably in this space. It's, it's quite luxurious. And we don't have it. Is it bad? Oh, God, that's awful. We don't have um, an air conditioning unit, but what we do have is a fantastic fan to keep us cool in this bed at night. So let me show you that. Well, I'll explain it from here, maybe. Right, so you can see this vent above the bed. So we open that. Then if you look in the middle of the roof there, that's the fantastic fan. And that basically sucks out warm air. And then if you look just beyond that, you'll see the first vent there and that when that is open it creates this kind of funnel which makes this lovely cool draft that comes all the way through to this vent here and keeps us nice and cool at night so it's really quite cozy up in the back of here and let me just flip this around I'll get as far back as I can get bang there we go so when you get as far back as you can get into the camper and then I flip this round just look how long this thing is I'm, I'm talking about the camper yeah, it's bloody cosy, I tell ya. And then in addition to that, there's lots of storage around the bed area. There's this little pantry thing here next to the fridge. Bunch of drawers. You know, you've got these little cabinets underneath the sink for your trash or whatever you want to use. And that's about it for the interior. So let's go outside and I'll show you what some of the external components and compartments look like and explain what they do. So we have two propane tanks and there's a little green indicator in there, let me just record that, that tells you whether or not there's any pressure. So when, you, when you've run out of gas and there's no pressure, it goes red just to let you know that it's done. And you can also switch it from this tank to that tank with this little uh, selector or you can run both of them at the same time by putting it in the middle. That doesn't work, so I'm going to have to get that fixed, which is fun. These two propane tanks are basically the energy source for the furnace, which we'll go back in and show you, which is really good. The cooktop, the water heater and the fridge when you're not plugged in to show power. So it has multiple uses and you'd think it'd be quite expensive, but it actually goes quite a long way. I think it cost me about $60 to have both tanks full and we still haven't emptied the first tank in, what, a week? So it's, it's quite good. So these are strapped in with these straps. The only thing that's annoying is they're a real faff to get out, I'll tell you that. So stick those back in. So this here is the plug socket for the shore power. So if you're at home, you just plug in and you're not using any energy or at a campsite or whatever. Like I said, I forgot to bring the cable, so we didn't get to use it this time, did we? What's this? I think it's to do with the fridge. This is a utility shower, so when we have to camp with Brent and he absolutely stinks, we don't want him in our shower. So he can have a shower outside. So this is where we fill up what's supposed to be called fresh water. Now we don't actually drink the water that comes out of those taps because we've been using this for quite a while and it, it still has pink antifreeze coming out of the taps. So we're not drinking that. But we use that water for things like, you know, washing your hands, flushing the toilet, washing fruit, having a shower, that type of thing. So you put that in there. So let's talk about the jacks. So on all four corners of the camper, we have these hydraulic jacks, these happy jack jacks. And there's a little remote control that will drop all four of them. And you can do each one separately, two together or all four together. And that is for getting the camper on and off. But really, we don't use those at all because the camper never comes off the, the truck. It basically lives on there. The whole purpose of the truck and the camper is as a work vehicle. So it's not as if we drop the camper at a campsite and drive off for three or four days and then come back and put it back on. We just keep it on the whole time. That's where it lives. That's its sole purpose. So these are called tie downs, this whole system. And it fastens to these extensions which are built into the chassis. So we had to get these 
professionally installed by a suspension specialist who attached them to the chassis and then these torque lift fast guns are attached to that and it's supposed to prevent it from moving around it moves around oh god i'm too fat for this job so this is the cable that attaches to the truck so the truck charges the two vehicle batteries which are stored inside the camper which they're not quite the same as a vehicle battery a standard vehicle battery apparently they are made specifically for rvs but they kind of look the same and so the truck will charge those two batteries while you're traveling and of course this this cable also serves as the brake lights for the back of the camper so that people can see what you're doing on the road when they're driving behind you oh my god i can barely breathe so love what's this interesting looking pipe all about that that one is where the, all those poops come out. Yeah, what do you do with it? You twist it, yeah. plug your nose, and run like hell. <laughs> so how often do we empty the sewage pipe, the black water? Uh, like every four days or so. Well, it all depends on the fresh water. When we run out of that, we empty everything. Yeah. So this is the uh, fun part of the sandy dump. And weirdly, I enjoy this, I don't know why. Amanda's yet to give this a try, haven't you? Look. Yeah, you're so good at it, yeah. so. Are you sure you don't want to try it? No, you're good. This is your poo pipe. So, to make it less awful, you connect uh, a water hose up to this adapter so that it's constantly flushing water through the sewage pipe as it goes down the tube, which makes it way less gross. And then you attach this to the, to the sewage outlet on the camper. It's really, it's quite good. That's where all the poo comes out. Put this guy on. Like that. Make sure it's tight because you don't want a little brown surprise hitting you in the face. And then get this. Connect it up to this water. There you get your poo pipe. My top tip is to make sure the sewage pipe is firmly placed and weighted down when put in the drain. Then turn on your water, make sure it's coming through the pipe. Yeah, that's great. And then in here, there's two levers that you pull. One for the grey water, one for the poo water. And there you go, it's really not that bad. It's not quite the ordeal that you might expect it to be. Just bring some nose plugs if you have a strong gag reflex. Right, so the compartments on this side of the truck, these are those two batteries that I was talking about. I'd love to give you a good look at them, but... But I think the drawer is knackered, so I'm gonna have to try and get that fixed. But basically there are two, it looks like vehicle batteries, but like I'm explained before I'm told they're specific for recreational vehicles two of those and those get charged by the truck every time that we drive which is kind of cool if I had solar panels it would be really nice then we'd have an extra source of power but that's all we've got for now most of the time it does pretty good this is just uh, access to some plumbing so not really much to see there this is the hot water tank plumbing and monitor and I think vent as well so it vents hot air out of there there we go and this little compartment here it's just storage so you put whatever you want in there but we put the uh, the camp stove and the pipes for when we refill the water you know clean, propane clean tanks water, yeah. a few tools just the basic stuff use whatever you want there used to be a magnet on there so it would hold it but I have to use the hard castle magnet and do it like that. <laughs> it's really annoying. So just just one more thing to add to the fix list. Ooh. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So one of the reasons why uh, the whole truck and camper option made sense to us, apart from the fact that Amanda already had this really sweet truck, is that if you add up the cost of a decent truck and a decent camper, they come to about half of what you would pay for something like 
a converted Mercedes Sprinter, maybe a bit less for something like a Dodge Ram or a Ford Transit. This truck has really capable 4x4 and winter tyres. And Some Sprinters do come with 4x4, but if you're looking at something like a Ford Transit, you'd have to get that added on. That's a conversion that you'd have to do, and the, the cost just goes up. So in terms of what you get for the money that you spend, the whole truck and camper combo here in North America anyway, definitely made a lot of sense to us. What do you like about it? Well, just on this trip alone, things got a really smelly. So, I kind of like that it's separate. So all our smelly boots and gear are just in the back seat. I will confess it is significantly ripe in here right now. I mean, just my appropriate footwear alone <laughs> is enough to make your eyes water. That's right. <laughs> I'm sure that some of the higher end vans do have all of that stuff and maybe even better but for anything close to this sort of price range it just doesn't even compare. I mean I can plug my laptop straight into this and work from the, the cab of the truck and of course we've got the, the back seats too so if we wanted to we could have guests in here. Don't want to. So the furnace, let's show them how we switch the furnace on. Voila! Magic! Just like that. Can you hear that? Yeah, and basically that heat comes from those propane tanks and it's almost instant, like if it's really cold, which it does get cold in here because even though this is a four season camper, there's only so much insulation you can put in these things. So if it's freezing cold outside and we've been gone all day, we get back in, it's bloody cold, you know. Put that thing on, within two minutes, you have to peel off your layers, you're way too hot. I, I, can, I actually can't bear it. I actually pretend to be sleeping in the morning, but I've been up for hours until you get up and crank it. I knew it. Thanks. So as we mentioned with the water, we don't drink what comes out of the taps because we don't trust it, you know, it's kind of nasty. Whereas we'll refill this, I don't know, 19 litres. So we refill this 19 litre tank, which is perfectly shaped to fit in this sink. So when we're traveling, it just sits in here. Ooh, there you go, that's the full thing. It never ever falls out. And we do go on some sketchy roads sometimes. So we just plunk that on the countertop. It's got a little faucet. You can refill your water. We trust that before we would trust drinking that. You may have tuned in just for a van tour, but I hope you enjoyed the photography too. And if you'd like to see more, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to tickle my bell. Okay, I'm Gavin Hardcastle. And I'm Amanda Hardcastle. You're not, you're not Hardcastle. We're not married. You haven't, I haven't even proposed. I'm Amanda yet. Hardcastle. Thanks for you're tuning in. You're just not though. Like it hasn't happened yet. Thanks for watching.